Hello everyone and welcome back to my playlist of pathology which we are doing from medium robins chapter number 20 endocrine system and today's video is going to be about the neuroendocrine tumors which reside in pancreas. So at the very outset I should also be telling you that the neuroendocrine category of tumors are also present in various other locations say for example you do see them in uh, also even appendix. But uh, our focus today will be on the pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, which are abbreviated as PENNETs. So these are there is another name for them, which are also called the islet cell tumors. They are rare in comparison to the exocrine pancreatic tumors. So the percentage for this particular tumor overall is just 2% of all the pancreatic neoplasms. Now, PENNETs are most common in adults and may be either single in the pancreas or they may be multifocal. So, there can be more than one tumor foci. And uh, when they are malignant, the liver is the most common site for metastasis. Uh, usually, many of them, and as you will see in a minute, are uh, benign tumors. But we'll see um, that some of them are also malignant and they tend to metastasize to liver. These tumors have a propensity to elaborate pancreatic hormones, uh, but some of them are even non-functional. So, they came. Um, pancreas is the hormones nikalte hain. Obviously, it's going to be uh, the islet cell tumor. So, jo normal pancreatic hormonal hamare uh, pas menu hai, usi mein agar tumor develop ho jata hai, so wo pancreatic hormonal secretions bar jayengi. So, for example, in a minute we will talk about uh, insulinoma. This is obviously a tumor which will secrete insulin. We will also talk about gastrinoma. So, this is a tumor which will secrete gastrin. Now, these are the hormones which are routinely secreted by the pancreas. But if they are secreted by the pancreatic tumor, their amount will be very, very high. And therefore, the effects will be subsequent. So, if you think about insulin, what is the job of insulin? So you see, you have cells there in your body. And then there is the blood which contain glucose. And the job of insulin is to get this glucose inside the cell. So, that's what insulin does. Yeah. This normal system. If the insulin ki concentration is zyada hogi, if there is very high concentration of insulin, the glucose will be entered into the cells quite a lot and there will be a state of hypoglycemia so therefore these patients present to the clinic by the signs and symptoms associated with hypoglycemia so they have like confusion coma and such sort of episodes so the uh, normal physiological range of insulin ki, wo hi exaggerated ho jayegi. Aur jab wo exaggerated ho jayegi, then obviously jo, uh, insulin ki effect hai, they will be super duper on the higher side Okay, इसी तरह gastrin के बारे में हम पढ़ेंगे. So the later typically are larger the time of diagnosis. So the non-functional uh, that should make I mean absolute sense to you. So for example, think about it. This is for example your pancreas, and here is a tumor, and this is a tumor which secretes a hormone. For example, and this hormone is a functional hormone, so it is able to do its job. Now compare it to another tumor within the same pancreatic tissue and now think it secretes something which is non-functional hormone. So it is also secreting a hormone but this hormone is now non-functional. Now which one would catch your attention first? The functional hormone or the non-functional hormone? Obviously the functional hormone because this hormone say for example if this is uh, insulin now insulin will do its job it will get glucose inside the cells and as a result of this this patient is going to develop hypoglycemia and because of this hypoglycemia the patient will come to you in the clinic and you see the hypoglycemia only because the hormone which is being released from this tumor is a functional hormone so it's the signs and symptoms which bring the patient to the clinic I mean obviously the patient does not know if he or she has more insulin inside the body or what is wrong with the pancreas but the patient definitely knows that there are episodes of fainting there are problems with consciousness and this is what brings the patient to the clinic now compare this scenario where we had a functional hormone with a scenario where we have a non-functional hormone so this non-functional hormone is uh, you know continuously being secreted but it does not generate any signs and symptoms therefore the patient does not come to the clinic and this tumor grows and grows and grows without the patient noticing the tumor so compare this patient with this patient this patient will come to the clinic very early this patient will not come to the clinic because there is no problem in terms of signs and symptoms so these tumors tend to be uh, 
larger and bigger at the time of diagnosis. So that statement should make absolute sense to you that non-functional uh, hormonal tumors are typically larger at the time of diagnosis since they come to the clinic uh, very late because they don't have any signs and symptoms. Okay. Now all pen nets with the exception of the insulinomas are regarded as having malignant potential. So they are either malignant or they have malignant potential. Insulinoma is usually benign. They are regarded as having malignant potential and in fact 60 to 90 percent of the pen nets manifest with overtly malignant features of biological aggressiveness. So they can be very very aggressive biologically such as they may metastasize into the local tissue so local aggression and metastasis even the distant metastasis particularly in liver. Okay, they have also some mutation association. For example, MEN1 mutation, P10 mutation, they have been reported, or there are some other mutations in the ATRX genes, so which are basically associated with telomere maintenance. So there are some mutations for you to remember, and there are some general principles of pen nets. Now, two specific examples. One is insulinoma, which we discussed slightly. That insulinoma is obviously going to secrete insulin in very, very large amount. And glucose is going to enter into the cell. This is going to lead to hypoglycemia. So, beta cell tumors, which are obviously insulin is released from the beta cell. Therefore, these are beta cell tumors. They are the most common type of pen net. So, pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor is such a common category here, insulinoma. And elaborate sufficient insulin. There is a lot of insulin to uh, induce the attacks of hypoglycemia particularly if the blood glucose is already low below 50 so this insulin is dangerous for these patients these attacks manifest as confusion stupor loss of consciousness all signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia they are precipitated particularly if the person has like uh, you know there is uh, prolonged fasting or exercise jahan glucose ki concentration already uh, drop down karti hai then insulin ka effect is much more pronounced most insulinomas are actually cured because they are benign tumors most of the time they are cured surgical resection se. okay so um, the majority of the insulinoma are identified while they are very small less than two because of the symptoms because they release insulin and insulin is a functional hormone in this case so it brings about the signs and symptoms and the patient comes to your clinic for advice and help malignancy in insulinomas occurs in less than only 10 percent of the cases so most of them around 90 percent of them remain uh, benign on histologic examination the benign tumor look remarkably like giant isles with preservation of uh, regular cords of monotonous cells and their uh, orientation to the vasculature malignant lesions also tend to be well differentiated and may be deceptively encapsulated so this is a lot about their morphological appearances now deposition of amyloid is a characteristic feature of many insulinomas uh, this protein is deposited histologically in these tumors and as i told you that they uh, are usually benign tumors but they may be malignant only 10 percent of the times if you see them under the electron microscope neoplastic beta cells like their normal counterparts display distinctive round granules and this is because they are releasing a lot of insulin okay the other category that we have to discuss about the pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor is gastrinomas obviously they are uh, the they are the tumors which secrete gastrin in huge amounts so there is marked hypersecretion of gastrin by gastrinomas which are just likely to arise in the diodenum and peripancreatic soft tissue as in the pancreas so these are different locations where we can have gastrinomas developed the zollinger ellison syndrome refers to the association of pancreatic islet cell lesion with hypersecretion of gastric acid and severe peptic ulceration. So imagine more gastrin, more peptic ulcer, more ulcers. Now, hypergastrinemia, which means increased amount of gastrin from a pancreatic or even a duodenal tumor, stimulates extreme gastric acid secretion. Obviously, that's what the job of gastrin is. So it increases gastric acid secretion and there are chances of peptic ulceration. The duodenal and gastric ulcers often are multiple. Although they are identical to those found in the general population, they often are unresponsive to the usual therapy. So that's the, because there is persistent uh, release of gastrin from a tumor, that becomes very resistant to therapy, the ulcers. In addition, ulcers may occur in unusual locations such as jejunum. When intractable jejunal ulcers are found, Zollinger-Ellison syndrome should always be considered and ruled out. 
more than one half of affected patients have diarrhea in 30 percent is the presenting manifestation so unexplained diarrhea for example the patient coming to you with diarrhea without any other particular cause and the diarrhea is off and on for a very long time uh, you should consider solinger allison syndrome and increased levels of gastrin the gastrinomas morphology they may arise in the pancreas or even in the peripancreatic region or in the wall of the diogenum so this is the scope of location over one half of the gastric producing tumors are locally invasive as opposed to the insulinomas which are mostly benign these gastrinomas have usually metastasized at the time of diagnosis in approximately 25 percent of the patients gastrinomas arise in conjunction with other tumors as well particularly men one syndrome so if you reach to a diagnosis of gastrinoma always look for some other pathologies as well so that concludes our discussion on um, pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors and in the next video we'll talk about some other gland of endocrine system so till then take care of yourself uh, keep watching dr asif lectures my name is professor asif qureshi